Uh huh. So, a pneumatic suite. Oh wow. For offlining. Well, no, for us this was this was when BBC Film Department first realised that we could start using video. It was a suite exactly like this, and it was pneumatic SP, pneumatic SP high band pneumatic, and obviously the end result would be transmitted. Mm. Um, and this is exactly, exactly the, uh, and it is, it's an 800. Yeah, well, I is, had a smaller one, uh, uh, RM440, which, is, which was a lot smaller, and you would, it sort of cut off about there, really, but, but it without was, the keyboard. But it was a, a cut-down version yeah. of, of this, as it were. Yeah. Yes, well, we needed the keyboard because, well, at the end, when we would have edited over generations to generation, we had to conform, and we had to then start to type yeah. time codes in anyway, but that's this thing. Yes, and it could control two, two players. Yeah, the t tape's not in. Right, let's, Put it in. let's see what happens here. One is... They're both recorders, but one is, let's see what happens. These are bigger than, yeah. you know, they were smaller ones, weren't they? Now, yeah, uh, these are the ones, these are <coughs> the ones. Here we go. Could you do effects? Because there's a, a mixer there um, on this. We, you, if you had a, a, a switcher connector or a mixer connected, yes, but we didn't have one in, in when I first when I first started, we didn't start to get those until we went over to ah online. So I, I did all my offlines because mm -hmm. I would only do offlines on the RM440 mm -hmm. and the two machines, and then log it all up, then right. take it to a, an outside facilities house for onlining. Right. And so you do your edit, and then you run through, or as you're going along, you'd log log all mm. the ins and outs and where the sound was coming from and uh, have everything prepared for when you go for the online. But you're saying you did it here? We, this, this was our beginning to end machine uh -huh. with, with these when we, when we first started. And it, this stayed until eventually, which we, we, I can see over there, we have a Betacam SP suite. And, and when we moved over to the Betacams, that's when they gave us one of these 900s. And Although that, this is, that is actually looks a lot more like the 440, yeah. doesn't this it? This is this is actually a 910. Yours. This is. I got to be honest. I I, I hated this because it wasn't what I called an editor's tool. This because it had the shut, two shuttle and jogs. I could independently yes. control the yeah, player. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But also, what was what was to me was very important was this ability on the shuttle and jog. On the shuttle, I could set it up so that it could go backwards at normal speed and just like on a steam beck I could play backwards and forwards and find my in and out very very quickly whereas with that single type of controller I had a lot of trouble. So does this, will this go backwards at normal speed? I can set it up. So if you get it on play, play. and then you want to go backwards hit, I would hit, just... hit, hit, this, hit the search. Well, I you didn't need to do that. You could just use the shuttle, couldn't no, you? No, but then, it's, then it goes into a different speed, you see. Oh, I, see. I could set it up so that if you've got the right re reverse speed, yeah. it's about there, I think. See, it's a bit too slow still. Yeah. There we go. And I could find my in point and out mm. point very quickly by playing. Yes, I want to go back just a little bit. Stop there. Edit, mark in. Now, I have to remember. So you've got to choose uh -huh. your video or an yeah. audio, source, or audio so you choose show. the source. In this case, it will be a VTR. Yeah. Um, we'd also and have to choose whether we're doing an assemble, which yeah. you would not. You only do at the beginning if you're black and bursting, or the insert. So basically, those would be set, and it depends on how many audio channels or whether you were not doing any audio at the time. You would select the relative, or you're doing audio only if you're doing a bit of voiceover or whatever. And then, so in let's out see. There. So, ah, now that's why isn't so. Hang on. I haven't got anything up in the source. So it doesn't matter. It should be able to set the recorder in. Why won't it let me? I've got that. I've got that. And there. How come this doesn't? 
This is coming up on both monitors. Because it's automatically, it's automatically feeding through. Um, if I press play there, then if I press play there, it wouldn't uh -huh. come through then. But so why can't I mark an in? While you're doing that, I found that as a little trick is if you found where it'd be on your source really, if you found the frame you liked on your source, which I can't get that to steady, but let's, let's, let's say that's a source and it's on a still frame. Yes. If you unplugged the uh, controller on the back of the source machine, you could do a freeze frame. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, we were, and people would say, have you done, done we freeze frame without We were all into tricks on how to, how, to, how to do a kind of a freeze frame with, yeah. without the proper machines. I think lucky enough we had the, um, the um, vibrating playback heads, so we actually could yes. on, on the machines that, that, that we had. Not, I can't remember. I know when we came to the Betacam SP, we could certainly do freeze frames, but I can't remember. You yeah, know, but that's how I, fa I found yeah. out how to do it on the, on the controller that I had. So but. Error, that's fine. So let's, let's put a in. Hmm. I can't, so can I put a player in? I can't get it to search. Is it? It's got time code. Oh, maybe it didn't start to. There we go. Hey. Still breaking up a bit, mm. isn't it? Because the other thing about offline editing was to be well organised, uh, which coming from a film background, we both were well organised. Yes. The cutting room was. That's. I that's mean, that it. was that was one of the issues when we moved to video. Film being obviously an, an, a non-linear format, you, you you could just start throwing shots together without the, the the fear of well that's too long and that's too short I can easily trim it. But with this, because it was a linear system, you know, you put a shot down, you put the next shot down, you put the next shot down. And I found that you had to be a little bit more disciplined and try and get it right. With a film? Bit more, with, 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 with tape. With tape. A little oh, bit more right first time. Otherwise, you're going to have to go another generation. Well, you go another you generation, but you could, the thing is, you could do preview. Yes. So you could do preview oh, yes. and see whether you read it was okay. Yes, but it's a but whole if you kept messing about with film, in the end you had so many joins no comment. that it just all jumped no and you there couldn't were, see there anything. Were, there, were, there were drawbacks. But what I'm talking about is if, you, <coughs> if, you want, if you're going to do a whole sequence, not just one edit, you know, you yeah, might, yeah, uh, yeah, sort yeah. Of you've got a whole sequence of shots together and you kind of think, uh, that's too long. Well, I'll have to wait till next time till we do another yes. generation. To an, because when I used to work on Panorama, we get up to nine generations. Um, and then eventually we'd have to conform that. Yes. And uh, that would certainly... Uh, Produce its issues. Just out of interest. Now let's just check again. Why? <coughs> that's coming through on both. Yes, because it's that's gone into pause. Oh. The recorder's gone into a pause mode. So now see, I can set a player in, but what I can't do is set a recorder in. There's a do a preview. Can you do it? Mark in and out and do a preview. It's just complaining. Well. The point is, if I press preview, where is that going to go? No, it's, it's kind of acts. No, it's coming up with an error yeah. message. And of course, the other thing to, to remember is pre roll. Mm -hmm. So, on 10. you couldn't start from the beginning of the shot because the camera oh, would absolutely. have got up to speed. Yep. So, you had to have pre roll. And when you did edit, it would go back and then come forward and then go in. At the, so, you had to yeah. have pre roll time then. Yes, you had. To, oh. It wasn't too bad with the when, when there was when the cameras were set up correctly. Obviously, at the beginning of the tape, there'd be a problem. But mm. if they'd set it up and they were using rec run time code, you could go back over the end of the previous shot. Well, that's sad that we can't get that to. But I presume we can get. So we can set player it, player in and out. Did not really show us the in and out. Oh yes. Yep. In and out time, 17 seconds. I managed to set an in and out time, but I can't set a... So you can do an in on the record No, side. it won't let me. It won't let me. It's just not... 
So we're there at 12 hours, whatever. Hold the entry button down, press it in, and it's, see that should now, that should now light up. Let's now see, maybe it's the LED. It's no, not running. It's not coming up with an error. No. It's not coming up with a whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, Does it matter? These are uncontrolled rather than time coded. I'm not reading up there now. Hang on, we've got uh, that. Director, we drumming on the desk by now. Yes. But there we go. Not that make any difference. Anyway, I can't seem to do an edit with it. So we had pneumatic tapes yeah, yeah. For, yes. from the camera and a pneumatic tape that we were to right. recording okay. onto. This was, I mean, it didn't last long. We then went over to beta, but we still had to conform at the end. We still yeah. had to use this you know, to each edit and typing in the time code that we could read off the reader that would yeah. be here and putting it into the player. And we also had to choose the roll number, put the right roll in because we could read the roll from the, as I say, the hours, and then we'd have to remake each edit. But what you would actually do, you'd actually set up a few edits, as it were, um, and, and store them, because you just, you go through a process. First yeah. of all, I'll just go through and do some typing in, do that edit, then that edit, then that edit, then that edit. Then I'd sit back and just say, right, conform from edit number, whatever it was you'd started, right. to whatever edit like, you just finished on. So you would just sit back and then do a bit of an right. auto-conform. Um, but yes, and of course, one of the other problems was, I think on these, you could only store 128 edits. There's 100, 128 edits. Um, no, it was a slow, it was an overnight yeah. process. It was not, not, I think the time, we, when we went all beta SP, mm -hmm. we had to have one of these edit controllers, yeah. which the main advantage I could see was, I think now it could handle a thousand edits or something, but instead of now having the nice, well, relatively nice LED readouts. Now, yeah, that's the, edit the information list, isn't is it? actually yeah. produced on a, on, a, on a monitor, which yes. I'm sure it made it easier for Sony, Sony to make, and perhaps cheaper because you didn't have to have you know, extra built-in electronics here, and this is stuff you could alter. Um, but let's say so you had to choose. Where did you have to choose? Let's face it. So that's. Is there anything? Is there any tapes? Go. You'd have different colours on that monitor, couldn't you? Um, you know, mm, for the for the numbers, you could. So it was easier to spot. I think, but that's probably only a black only, and white. Well, monitor. only yeah, it was yeah. green or something. It wasn't fancy. So, so that's the recorder. So now let's. Shoot. We've got a tape in there. Right. Let's just play it on. Joke. Yeah, no, sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, right. I'm, I'm controlling it. Oh, hang on, it's player two. That's player two. Sorry, I was on the wrong player. Right. So instead of having the two knobs, you've only got one knob and yeah. you have to select, select whatever you want to play. And the other problem was if you went to shuttle, it didn't move because you can't set up a speed. Yeah. So I couldn't do this play forwards shuttle backwards by just going between these two buttons it just it wouldn't do anything and it as i said sadly it did drive me a bit mad at first uh, i just mentioned this whole business about we would go nine generations say mm. and then at the end we would then have to go and paint back and uh, the original rushes over each shot this particular edit controller this is the 910 this is the second generation of the 900 and when I was working up in Lime Grove and were on Panorama, the engineers came to me and said, Rob, we've got a problem down in the late show. Um, they're just getting whole new suites, lucky so-and-sos. Um, and they're getting Grass Valley mixers. 
but we have a problem interfacing the new 910s they're getting with the Grass Valley, something or other. Would you mind terribly if we took your old 900 from you in your edit suite and put a 910 in temporarily? It's exactly the same, they said, it won't make... I said, yeah, sure thing, that's okay, I don't mind. And then I'd heard something about the 910, that this has macros, i.e. you can set up a whole chain of events dependent on which function key you pressed. And I got the, I, there was a manual with it, and I got it out, and I realized, I started playing, and I started trying to write some macros, that this whole business of us, of us having to, on the ninth generation, going back to each edit, reading the Vitsi, typing in the number into the, the player in, etc., etc., you could automate this with a macro, because this, this machine could interrogate the machine and read the bitsy from the machine and automatically put it into the player in. It could then move forward a frame, set the recorder in for the next edit. This was, this was suddenly, it became a wonderful machine. Apart from, you know, so I still didn't like it shuttle and jog. And I'm afraid I turned around to the powers that be. I said, look, you know on Panorama, etc., we always end up working the whole weekend, night and day. This 910 means that we can be much, much more productive at the end. We don't have to sit there with our eyes trying to read time codes, etc. You can just press a button and it does it for you. You can just whiz through, press a button, whiz through, press a button. I said, you can't take it from me. You cannot take this from me. <laughs> and I won. The engineer said, you're a bugger because you've really sodded up. But they've had to agree on high up. Yes, you are going to keep a 910 and just in one of your suites, so that whoever has come to the end of their program can come in, use this, and just run through it and use the macros. Mm. And that's how we survived until the magical QDOS, which is a whole nother story, when suddenly all of these issues we had with conforming and producing EDLs, etc. Yeah. When I used to go and edit, when I would edit panoramas on location, when I went to Hong Kong and um, when the wall came down and they shot, sent me over to, 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 to East Berlin and the, the Romanian Revolution, then you were producing a 40, 50 minute program and you had to watch the general because there is no way mm. we, I was going to have time on location to start reconforming. So yes, what, you were what I was editing is what was going to get eventually satellited back, yeah, back to the Yeah, and I didn't have that. As it, um, and the online suites you went to that were outside facilities that you were renting by the hour. Anyway, I'm, I'm really glad they managed to recreate the two, mm. the, t the, the two situations that I was involved in in, in the evolution, um, until we get, till we till we got to the final avid type light works nonlinear, and as I say, it's sad that, that in the end it became quite viable with what we used as this QDOS system when you had this extra logging. But uh, I, I had a real love relationship <coughs> with that. When they, as I mentioned, when they introduced this in. In, in, into my situation, and I say, I, I found, I became less productive. I, I couldn't edit because I couldn't move as fast because I had to whittle around with this knob and it was always shoot off somewhere. And I remember there was one little suite left up at the end of, of the corridor where I was working in the top of Lime Grove. And uh, in, the, in the evening when whoever used that suite went home, I would, right, I'm gonna go and cut the next sequence down on this. And I'm gonna do it much, much quicker because I, um, until eventually that was taken away. But I got used to that the solution for me with this was quite simple, not to use this little horrible thing, but this, the shuttle and jogs on here, are a virtual mimic of this, and I can set these up. Instead of like you could edit without, the, the, without this anyway, couldn't yeah. you? Because this had all the selection and in and outs and yes, anyways. Yes, but, <coughs> but you can actually... Because you can choose here and do the in and outs there. Oh, I forgot how to shut. So every one, and that's the shuttle and jog. It's just, really just the. It's in shuttle. That's it. I wanted it to be. I thought there was. Um, a button you have to hold it in. No, but I thought there was a button where I could just go backwards and. I know I've, I'd actually would start using the front panel, so I'd, I'd have because our machines would be here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'd actually find when I'm trying to find somewhere on the the rushes and wanted to find an in and an out on a piece of camera or the beginning of a pan or the beginning of a zoo. I just start using the front panel knob. Just found it so much more effective than that. So I had a solution to the problem in the end. It wasn't as perfect to say, I love that because I didn't have to think. This was like a steam bag. It was just that, you know, you didn't, 
It's your hands you were there. Used to, you just, I want to go backwards. You just, <clears throat> you, you could just do it. You it's didn't have to sort of think. What you got used to. I've got to press that button to, to return to the player or whatever, and then I've got to press the shot, and then I've got to set the speed up. Yeah. No, I. As you say about Steam I had Deck, a I did, definite I, affection for that. I, right. So, this is a Sony BVU 850P. Now that. Well, P will usually meant player, but they're both. No, but it's got record button, so it's not. And this is a. I think these are. There was just player, wasn't it? To make it cheaper. Yeah, I can't remember these twenty minute, twenty minute tapes. These these, and this is a Umatic SP. This is not a standard Umatic. Yes, SP. This is the the, the highest quality Umatic. This is. The first tape that the BBC could be considered the, had, was of a sufficient quality to transmit. Um, and so th normally we would be given a record machine and a play only machine, but I noticed that these are two, two record machines. Um, but the front panel, we really wouldn't use the front panel basically because you control all the functions from here. So anyway, just pop a tape in like that. Make sure it was in remote. Where would the remote be? There we go. Make sure it was in remote. Um, also, if it was a recorder, make sure that the input would be on dub, which will give you the better quality transfer. Um, then there'll be there'll be the ability to to, to select which sound channel to be recording to but of course we will be controlling that from from the mixer um, and of course actually you could use this whole front panel to do editing on you don't you wouldn't need that but we never use it like that but when I used to work on location particularly with the beta SP machines I would actually use the front panel to do all the editing but there's only one problem with the front panel you only had a need you only could only store one edit I, if you did an edit and then went to another edit and think, no, actually, I really want to go back and change the previous edit, I think that's as far as you could go. You couldn't go back, like on these, you've got up to 128 edits stored, so you can wind back and think, oh, this, is, this, this, this sequence isn't working, I want to go back and start remaking the edits. You could do that on that, and that, even though I think that had 1,000 edits, sorry, the beta SP, but this, no, it was just that's it. You did an edit, and that was basically it. Um, and so really we just set up our audio levels and we would have a separate mixer and and that would be it once it was set up we all the functions would really be done from the edit controller sadly this is not quite doing what i wanted to do but basically so we're edit controller and what i loved about it was that you had a separate knob control shuttle and jog for the record machine and a separate shuttle and jog for the player machine and I think on this one, not that we ever ha had a set when we were using Umatic, I would never had the good fortune to have two players, but you also can have two players and you can select between player one and player two. But when I used it, we only just had the one player. It wasn't until we moved on later on into beta SP that sometimes we could have two players. Um, so very basically, you would play and shuttle through the tape until you found the relevant point. Sadly, at the moment, we've got a slight problem with this tape and it's not really wanting to show us. Um, it's actually it's actually going into a shuttle mode for some reason. Give me a second. Whenever I hit play. It's running very fast. It's not, basically, anyway, I would find an in point, pause it, and I would then hold down the entry button and then press, press the relevant player in. Then I would then play further forward till I found what I thought was a suitable out point, press pause, press the entry button and press player out. So I would now have a player in marked in and a player out marked in. And I would then go over to my recorder, find the point where I'd like to add this new shot onto the shot that I've already got recorded. Say I wanted to come down there at the end of that pan up, pause it there, and I'd then hold down the entry bar and then press recorder in. Sadly, 
it's not working on this system at the moment. Then once I've done that, I could press the preview button and it would then wind back however many seconds I set on the uh, pre-roll time, wind forward and I'd watch the record monitor and at the appropriate point, it would then cut over, not actually making the edit because it's a, a preview to wherever I'd select on the, on the player button. So if, if I was, well, if I was happy with that, then I would just, it would be flashing at me. I could then go into auto edit and it would then actually do the edit um, and record my selection onto the record, ta record tape. Basically on, on this system, we just have one player and one recorder, whichever way round it is. And we'd have a monitor for the player and a monitor for the, re for the recorder tape. Um, and that's how, in when, when, when I used to use Umatic SP, that would be our setup. We'd also have, importantly, um, something which of course you couldn't do with film when you're editing, you couldn't control the levels, what well, you could do on the Steenbeck volume knob, but basically that wasn't something that was fixed. If you f did a fade, that was just a fade you did in passing. But you now, as you were recording your sound over whenever you selected the sound channels, etc., you could actually control the level of the sound and you had a PPM uh, to do that. When we first went over to, <coughs> to, to Beta SP and we were still you, having pneumatic tapes, our, our edit suite actually would consist of a, a Beta recorder and a Beta player and a pneumatic player because we had to have a Beta player because obviously, well, one, they were starting to shoot on Beta. But obviously if you created a, an assembly of shots and it's on Beta, now you wanted to go another generation. Well, you need a beta player to actually put that into to be able to then copy over that and create a next generation. So, yes, it was, it was expensive stuff. Um, and it's like Avid was initially when it finally came in. That was very expensive. Um, the other, sorry. But, but, but of course, the cost, the cost of shooting was, was made the difference, yeah. though. The fact you're shooting on a, something that was cheap compared with film.